This is your Star Wars canon update for the week of October 9th. I will be going over Star Wars Rebels recent episode, Hera's Heroes, as well as Darth Vader issue number 25 and Han Solo issue number 4. Starting with Star Wars Rebels Episode 5, Hera returns to her homeworld for a supply mission with her crew. She rescues her father and fellow Rebels from Imperials to find out that her home has been taken over by the Empire. They are now using her home as a base, and her precious family heirloom, the Kalakora, is in the hands of the Empire. Then Hera decides to risk her own life and being caught to get said family heirloom. The Ghost crew won't let her do it alone and they proceed with the mission. Ezra dresses like an Imperial and brings Hera into the base as a prisoner. From there, Hera gets the Kalakora, but things go south when Thrawn shows up and Hera pretends to be a kitchen servant. But Thrawn isn't buying it and has her questioned. Here we realize that Thrawn is ahead of the game and knows who Hera is. He keeps her family heirloom and throws her into a holding cell with Ezra, who gave himself away when he went to protect her from Thrawn. The Imperials make a deal with Hera's father if he gives himself up, which he's a big resistance leader so that would be a big win for them, they'll release his daughter. He agrees to the exchange but doesn't realize Chopper has been in communication with Hera and Ezra since they were imprisoned and he sets up bombs around Hera's house. During the exchange, Chopper blows up her home and Hera, her father, and all the rebels escape. Thrawn has the opportunity to fire at the ship, but allows them their victory for the day. The great parts about this episode, I think they're doing a fabulous job with Thrawn, and even though the expanded universe no longer is canon, they're still drawing from it and making him a very scary but sophisticated man that also loves art. And I love how he almost lost his shit when the other Imperial wanted to destroy Hera's family heirloom. And like I said before, Thrawn is way ahead of the Rebels, and right now he's just gathering information, and I love him saying that part of defeating your enemy is knowing them, and that includes their culture, their art, what makes their people tick. And even though technically he lost this round to the Rebels, he doesn't consider it a loss, he considers it a win because he gathered more information on them. I also enjoyed seeing more of Chopper's past, he stops and stares at a crashed Y-Wing, which brought him to the planet. He still has issues with the ship, which hints at a darker past. Kanan fighting, especially with his impairment, is always a blast. Dislikes, I think the only dislike I had for this episode was the fact that Hera even went on this mission, that something as small as a family heirloom was more important than the rebellion. And we've seen in the past she's been willing to sacrifice a lot, and I don't know if that's just part of her character that was the point that she has sacrificed a lot and this was something so important to her that she had to have something to realize what she was sacrificing so much for. But then at the end she just kind of gave it up like, oh, well, you guys are my family so it's not a big deal. I also wish that somebody would have questioned her a little bit like, oh, hey, do you think maybe this isn't a good idea? They just were all like, hey, yeah, let's do this. But I'm hoping this is just part of her character progression. So now let's talk about the other canon that was released this week, starting with Darth Vader issue number 25, and this was the final issue in the Darth Vader series. And here's a refresher just in case you forgot what was going on. It is a time of rebuilding for the Empire. After the destruction of the Death Star, Darth Vader is atoning for his failure by destroying all who would oppose the Empire. While Darth Vader tracks down the traitorous scientist Silo to end things once and for all, Aphra tells Palpatine all of Vader's dirty little secrets. So the comic begins with Vader blasting into Silo's whale cyborg ship and entering. He takes down everyone trying to stop him. Silo even sends his clones to take out Vader, which he easily destroys, and he lets Silo know the fact that he can destroy him repeatedly is by far his most appealing trait. Vader then, knowing that Silo's mind is protected from Force mind tricks, instead forces the cyber whale's brain to fly directly into a sun. Vader flies away in his ship as the whale and Silo are destroyed in the sun. Vader returns to the Executor, where Palpatine is waiting for him. Palpatine informs Vader that his aide, Aphra, has been most helpful in filling in the gaps for the Emperor. Turns out Aphra told Palpatine everything Vader was up to including Vader creating his own army within the Empire. But instead of being super pissed, Palpatine tells Vader he's impressed and that he let his anger and pride guide him to the darkest of places, and that is their way. Vader is everything Palpatine could hope for. Palpatine then leaves to give Vader a moment with Aphra, who he's sure Vader wants to have a few words with. Vader chooses to give Aphra the death she most fears, death by outer space. 
Vader goes back to Palpatine, who gives the control of the fleet and the executioner to Vader. Vader kills the pain in the ass tag who had betrayed him during the show to run wars and appoints a new admiral, Ozil. Alone, Vader imagines reaching out to Luke and says, soon. Lastly, we see that Aphra is still alive and she was retrieved by BT and Triple Zero. So I consider that actually a great conclusion to the Darth Vader series. I wish it was still going on, but 25 issues was still a lot, and I think they told a lot of great stories. If you like Aphra, she's actually getting her own series soon. I'm not sure if BT and Triple Zero will be with her, but they probably will be. If you like them, it's a bonus. If you don't like them, then I'm really sorry. There was also a mini story at the end of this issue talking about Vader going to Tatooine to wait for two bounty hunters. To pass the time, he slaughtered a whole village of Tusken Raiders, except one got away. When he reports to the others, they believe him some sort of god and erect a statue of him. Super weird, but kind of cool. Lastly, I want to talk about Han Solo issue number four that came out this week, and here's a refresher just in case you forgot or you're not up to date. It is a period of unrest. In a galaxy oppressed by the Empire's merciless cruelty, there is little hope for the future. Despite that, rebels have banded together to fight back against corruption. Han Solo, untrusting by nature, returned to smuggling, but when Princess Leia gives him an offer too good to refuse, he finds himself racing the Millennium Falcon in one of the most notorious races in the galaxy, the Dragon Void Race, as a cover to find a potentially traitorous rebel spy. After a deadly start to the race, Han finds the informant, a rebel spy named Bot, and brings her aboard the Falcon. But when Han finds the next target, he quickly discovers that Chewbacca and the mysterious rebel spy have an old score to settle. So the comic begins and we learn that Chewie actually shot a creature that was trying to eat Han that Bot was trying to use to pay off important people. When Bot lost the creature, she couldn't pay those important people and she couldn't afford the bribes and protection, resulting in hard times. Han tells her that if she feels like she does have to shoot someone, to not shoot Chewie and instead shoot him. But luckily the ball of light that has been following Han, his witness, got some help from Madame Lo Riano. After cooling the situation, Lou tells Han Solo about the origins of the Dragon Void race, her grandmother being a founding member, and that she can see the stars are in Han Solo's blood. Han eventually returns to find the two informants talking and Chewie and Bot making bygones be bygones. But Bot lets Han know that the other spy agreed to meet them on the same planet as her after the stormtrooper arrest that happened earlier. She tells Han the race is over for him and to wait on the planet for the last rebel spy but that doesn't sit well with Han, who questions why Leia didn't tell him herself. Bot says that would have been too risky. The race runners inform Han he has five minutes to take off the planet or be disqualified. The other informant tells Han not to trust Bot, but then the last spy comes tearing towards the Falcon while being pursued by Imperials. In order to gain Han's trust, the spy's bodyguard says the words, your worshipfulness which Han has said to Leia on a few occasions. Han then trusts them both and lets them on board. Now one of the traitors is definitely on the Falcon with everyone else. With seconds to spare, Han takes off and is able to continue the race. But that's not the end of it as Imperials continue to follow the Falcon until they jump into hyperspace. Han begins to suspect the bodyguard that came with the last rebel spy is doing some other work for Leia, as only Luke and Leia have ever heard Han say, her worshipfulness. They come out of hyperspace to find a Star Destroyer and ties waiting for them. The other racers agree to help Han take them out so they can keep racing. The last page shows the latest rebel spy that boarded the Falcon, dead. There's only one more issue to this miniseries. I'm betting it's not Bot that is actually the murderer, it's the first rebel spy because he's awfully quick to accuse everybody else of being the murderer. And the, usually the squeamish one that is trying to point fingers is trying to deflect away from themselves. I would actually be excited if they did further Han Solo adventures in the future and we got to learn about more of him helping the rebellion, but I don't know what they're going to do with it as of yet. So that is your Star Wars canon update for last week. Make sure you come back every week for new Star Wars videos. I do canon updates and I try to do a bonus Star Wars video as well. So make sure you like this video, subscribe, and come back for more videos.
This is your Game of Thrones canon. Game of Thrones, oops, 